Hello, beautiful people, and welcome, hi, to the Genshin Impact 4.1 Meta Roundup. Now, Nebula has come out recently, and I still have not recorded the post-release analysis. So I'm not going to get into all of the nitty-gritty of, of what I think about him any more than I would for any other character during the Meta Roundup. But if you are looking forward to that, make sure you subscribe, because the post-release should be coming out in the, in the, in the next few days. So... What do we have, this abyss? We have the Millennial Pearl Seahorse, followed by Rift Hounds and Abyss Mages. Then we have two Hatchlings, followed by one Suppression Mech and one Construction Mech. And then on the second side, we have Coplia Boss. And finally, Chamber 3, Mirror Maiden, followed by two Wind Operatives. And then on the second side, we have one of the new bosses, the Experimental field generator. Now, there's a lot of things to say about a bunch of these enemies because a lot of them are new. First, the Millennial Pearl Seahorse has a very tanky elemental shield. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the amount of gauge units for its elemental shield is the same as the Emperor of Fire and Iron, whatever. However, pyro elemental shields, when you apply hydro to them, you benefit from a multiplier of times two for how much of the shield you're removing per gauge unit of hydro. In other words, if you're applying one unit of hydro to the crab boss, that's like the equivalent of applying two units of pyro or cryo or dendro to the seahorse boss. Obviously, when it comes to the crab boss, you can also remove one unit with one unit of electro or 0.5 units with cryo. But what, what that leaves you with for the crab is a situation where if you put a hydro unit on the team, most of the hydro units are able to shred through the shield fairly quickly. With the seahorse, one unit isn't going to really be enough to shred through the shield. Because all of the elements that work against Electro work equally as well, that's not that big of a downside, right? You don't have to bring three Dendro units or three Cryo units or three Pyro units. You can mix and match between those. But it is something that is worth mentioning is that if you only have one unit that has one of the elements that works well at breaking the shield, you're going to struggle breaking the shield. Now, base resistances without breaking its shield are 90%. That doesn't mean you do 10% of, of the damage. The resistance formula is slightly different when you're above 75%. It means you're doing about 21% of your base damage instead of 10%. However, if you have ways of shredding its resistances, this reduction is can be lowered a decent amount, especially when you're looking at high forms of resistance shred like Veridath and Venerer, or combining forms of resist resistance shred like Veridath and Venerer plus Zhongli, or Ella plus Superconduct, stuff like that, right? Right? When that's what you're looking at, you can get through the, the, the seahorse without having to break the shield if you have some form of resistance of resistance shred or if you have really, really, really high DPS. Anyways, enough about the seahorse. Actually, no, another thing that's important about the seahorse is it leaves a lot of electro fields on the ground, which can hurt Hyper Bloom teams a fairly large amount, as well as Virgin teams, because his field automatically triggers Hyper Bloom when you create seeds and the Hyper Blooms will target you instead of targeting the enemy. There are ways to bait him outside of his electro fields and to bait the attacks that create electro fields away from him so that your seed generation is still fine. But it is something that is worth a mention and like that can prevent you from getting the results you'd want to see with the Hyper Bloom team. Next up, we have the Rift Hounds into Pyrobis. There's 10 whelps, two Rift Hounds, or two big one, two big Rift Hounds, and then you have three Pyro Abyss Mages. The Rift Hound waves are fairly straightforward, is it don't die to corrosion. The Pyro Abyss Mages, though, spawn in a very awkward way, where they basically each spawn, like, they, they spawn in a triangle in a way that's fairly annoying to, like, get far away from the, enough from them that they do their teleport attack, right? So uh, just as a quick recap, you got your Abyss Chamber. Well, let, let's say you have an enemy here. This enemy will decide which move, which attack pattern is going to uh, it's going to use. Based on a few factors, the most important factor is how far away you are from them. And they have two hidden like range things, one which is fairly close to them and one which is fairly far from them. If you're inside the close one, they'll do a melee attack. Right, if you're if you're standing in here, right? Let's use blue to represent the player. If you're standing in here, they'll do a melee attack. If you're standing in here, they'll do a range attack. There are some enemies like the Abyss Mages where there's not that much variation between the melee and the range attacks. However, if you're standing outside of this range attack circle, if you're standing here, then they will not do an attack and instead they'll walk towards you. They'll walk towards you right up until they're in range to do a range attack and then they'll do it. However, some enemies don't walk. 
such as Pyro Abyss Mages. What they do instead of walking is they teleport. The way that they teleport is they will teleport in front of you, where your character model is currently looking, not your camera, your character model. If you're looking here, right, if this is your field of vision, then they'll teleport somewhere inside this area. What you usually want to do to group them is you want to face a wall. You want your field of view to be towards a wall where you're fairly close to the wall. That way, the area where they can teleport is very, very small. That way, they're all going to teleport very, very close to each other. Let's showcase this inside the Noblesse Elijah domain, which is the, the easiest way to showcase it. So as long as I stay close enough for them to grab aggro, if I then run here, They all go pretty close together. When you're not looking at a wall, the area where they can teleport is a little bit bigger, which makes it a bit harder to properly group them. That being said though, it is still RNG, so you can still get lucky grouping, even if you're not looking at a wall. This is fairly all right. And if this ends up happening, you can nudge them towards each other like this. Attacking them won't, won't push them back but but you can just push them into each other anyways getting them close enough that your aoe hydro attacks can still hit all of them is going to make a huge difference to how fast you can clear the chamber next chamber uh we have two hashlings followed by uh the suppression and the construction mech the construction mech is a huge pain in the ass because it's the one that does the spin attack when it comes to hashlings just pretty straightforward you, you just kill them after that try to stay close to the suppression mech because it will not move towards you whereas the construction one will and then you've got Coplia, which in my opinion is a lot more difficult than the other version of this boss its attacks are a lot less telegraphed it attacks more often and they're closer together in a way that's going to effectively make it easier for you to get one shot there are some teams where that's not that big of a deal but there are other teams where unironically this boss can kill you now i like that part of it i think that's cool the one part of it that i don't like is that uh, some of its attacks aren't just an attack that can stagger you they also push your character backwards even if you iframe the attack with a burst or, or or a dash which means that you're gonna consistently get pushed away from it which means that melee characters especially the ones that don't have the greatest tracking or melee attacks that you use while you're on a different character you can very easily find yourself in situations where your melee attacks stop hitting specifically i've been playing a lot of neville because i think he's pretty fun and whenever I play him in Hyperloom teams with Kuki, I really feel the lack of range on Kuki's E and very often find myself just looking at five bloom seeds next to it and unable to walk forward enough to actually hyperbloom them. Outside of that though, I think it's good to move things a little bit more in the direction of shit that will kill you. I'd rather the bosses get more and more dangerous and punish you more and more when you make mistakes instead of their HP just going up and up and up until you have to wail the, to reach the, the DPS requirements. It still has a similar impact of like, well, if you want to play defensive units, you'll generally be hurting your team DPS. So it will artificially reduce your team DPS by forcing you to play defensive units if you think you need them. But it also gives a bit of skill expression if you want to play without defensive units. I I, I really like it. I think again, right, the, the fact that it pushes you back, I don't like very much, but the fact that it that it can kill you very easily, I do like. Finally, Chamber 3, you have one Mirror Maiden followed by two Wind Operatives. The Wind Operatives are allergic to walking forward. Uh, the Mirror Maiden, is just, it's, it's, she spawns by herself and it's whatever, it's just a Mirror Maiden. Uh, we're used to it by now. The Wind Operatives spawn on opposite sides of the room, just far away enough from each other that stuff like Kazuha won't be able to group them, which is not not very fun. Uh, you have ways of making them group, kinda, because there's an attack where they will like teleport over you and then plunge attack on you. That being said, that's a counter, which means you need to be able to hit them from the middle in order to get that attack. There are also ways to like slightly group them by going to one of the sides and just waiting for one of them to walk into the other, but that takes a very long time because they do have a bunch of range attacks with really, really high range, right? Their range circle, like I mentioned earlier, right? Th th this circle right here, well, it's actually like in this big. So they'll also just shoot at you. Anyways, point being, there are ways to group them reliably, but they are very slow. And it involves a lot of looking at them and waiting. Fairly similarly to the Hydro droplets from the Last Abyss, 
where they didn't group themselves up until got two attacks done and then transformed and then they had an attack that made them move forward so they grouped themselves one thing though if you want to go against them and not have to wait you can go for either venti which will group them fairly easily you can actually use sucrose burst and it is actually pretty decent but you will have to make sure you aim it properly and you're generally gonna have to probably use a charge attack to knock one of them closer to the other one when it comes to kazuha similar thing you can also use a sack sword Kazuha to hold E on one of them to get it closer to the middle and then go in between the two and do another hold E. And all in all, they're not that tanky. It's really just a question of they're a bit of a pain in the ass to group and their counter attack where when you hit them during it, they'll teleport over you and do a plunge attack can let them dodge attacks that only hit the ground. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And then finally, you have the experimental field generator, which, which is the boss that I kind of like. It doesn't have any real stalling attacks, but instead it has actually hard hitting attacks with a unique way to dodge them. So your jump height when you're fighting this boss gets buffed to the point of basically every character is Chao. And it does like shockwave attacks that do like north of 10,000 damage. Obviously, it's going to depend on how much defense your characters have, but so you really are incentivized to try to dodge them by jumping over them. You don't have to. You can still just play very strong defensive units to let you basically not have to jump. In a lot of teams, jumping is a, uh, is a DPS loss, obviously, especially jumping that high, because jumping higher means that you're jumping for a longer duration, which means you're losing more time doing your attacks or whatever. All in all, right, this is an abyss where defensive units feel very nice. I think on the first First side, it's not really that big of a deal. The, the suppression mech that can snipe you with dendro hits. If you don't have any stagger resistance, you can get staggered and like basically comboed by like three of them in a row and just die. But outside of that, first side is fairly like, it's fairly easy not to die. Attacks are pretty telegraphed and they don't tend to do that much damage. Second side though, I mean, you obviously have the Rift Hound stuff. Uh, one thing that is very, very incredibly cringe is the Pyro Abyss Mage has thorns, which means if you hit the Pyro Abyss Mages, it will apply Pyro to your character. But because right before the Pyro Abyss Mages, you have Electro enemies, that means that if you got hit by the uh, by the Rift Hounds, even if it was during an iframe from a burst, right, you'll still have Electro on you. And then if you attack the Pyro Abyss Mage, you're gonna trigger Overload on yourself. If you get over loaded by a pyro abyss mage that didn't attack you it's because of that but outside of that, like first chamber is not really that big of a deal it's really mostly the coplia and the field generator and really more so coplia than the field generator uh, that is very very dangerous if you're playing a team that has like a normal amount of defensive utility and you don't dodge the attacks you will die <laughs> You will take a lot more damage if you're inside Bennett Burst because Coplia will throw Coplius. He'll start spraying around the room and then he'll hit you with cryo hits so you can get rev melted. That being said, one unit that is very nice at helping you not get one shot is Sing So. All right, Sing So basically halves all the damage you take, which is generally going to be enough to let your healers keep up if you are playing with healers or at the very least prevent you from getting one shot too easily. I've found using Sing So on the second side to make, to make clear significantly more comfortable in almost every archetype because of the, just the sheer amount of damage reduction that he gets. He's not necessary, but he does help you. He prevents you from getting punished as easily. Oh yeah, actually one last thing before we get into archetype specific stuff. The blessing is very strong. When the character's HP increases or decreases, their normal attack and charge attack damage will be increased by 16%. For six seconds, max three stacks. This is a pretty big deal. When you look at Hu Tao, when you look at Nevilet, when you look at Linny, when you look at, uh, yeah, Risley once he comes out, this is a lot. This is 48% damage to normal and charge attacks, which is more than the main set of a goblin. Now, there's two things I want to say about that. The first one is very obviously is going to make teams that rely on normal and charge attackers, especially the ones that have ways to manipulate their own HP, a lot stronger. The second thing isn't really related to the meta roundup itself, but more so Nevilet's release. Keep in mind, he is a lot stronger in this abyss than he should be because of this blessing, which will not always be there. I think the next blessing is also very good for him, but that's because they're, they want to sell him, right? Blessings like this won't always be around. So just keep in mind that this will inflate his numbers. In any case, let's get into archetype specific stuff. Yeah, I guess we can start with virgin teams. Well, virgin teams by default won't have a hydro unit, which makes them fairly decent at getting past this first chamber, right? With the power of this mage. That being said, they don't 
don't tend to be the strongest in, in single target, so it's probably not what I would recommend on the first side, or sorry, on the second side. Uh, on the first side, they're all right, but again, like I mentioned uh, a little while ago, the electro field that the seahorse generates can fuck you over if you're relying a lot on Burgeon or Hyperbloom for the seahorse and make things just a lot less comfortable. Uh, it's still all right, but it's it's not a particularly strong abyss for Virgin. Hyperbloom is always strong. <laughs> You have a Hydro unit, so you can be played on the second side. It's strong enough that even if you're losing some Hyperlooms to the Seahorse fields, it's still not that big of a deal. Single target, very strong for the second side, but there's no, like, five enemies at once, so you don't even have to necessarily play the more AoE-focused Hyperbloom teams if you play it on the first side, right? The, the hardest of the three chambers, in my opinion, in terms of, like, getting three stars on it, is the first one. So getting a more single target focus is generally going to benefit you a little bit more. But yeah, all in all, it's it's an it's an okay abyss for Hyperbloom. It always is. It's pretty hard not for it not to be. Nilo Bloom. Nilo's passive prevents her seeds from being hyperbloomed or burgeoned, which actually means that it does work around the seahorses. Uh, issues. Uh, you are also going to tend to use more than one Dendro unit in Nilo teams, which makes it so that it's not too difficult to actually destroy the Seahorse shield. All in all, this is going to feel fairly good. On the second side, you're obviously going to be very strong against, against this. And then you've got two single target bosses. That being said, you don't get fucked over too hard by this. And in order to make up for the self damage, Nilo teams tend to have a lot of healing, especially if you're running Yao Yao, which can make it so that the the more quote unquote difficult part of this boss is like to some extent canceled out. Nilo herself is also very tanky, so if you know the attack is about to come and you're not, you don't trust your dodging that much, you can just swap to Nilo and tank it on her. All in all, while this is not an abyss that I would describe as a Nilo abyss, it is still an abyss where Nilo will perform a little bit better than average because of the things I mentioned. But yeah, all in all, Nilo is pretty good this abyss. Uh, obviously, if you don't have Nahida, your Nilo team is in single target, can fall off quite a bit, and it can be a lot harder to meet your DPS checks. So just this is mostly speaking about Nilo teams with Nahida. Mono Pyro. Mono Pyro is fairly interesting this abyss, I think. Linny is very good because of the blessing. But obviously, Mono Pyro is not really ideal for the second side because dealing with the Pyro Abyss mages is going to be a huge pain in the ass. So it's really more of a first side team. Uh, on the first side, it is pretty, pretty good. I like there's no real issue with it. If you're playing Linny, you're benefiting from this insanely broken blessing. So that's another thing that you've got going for you. All in all, it's just, it's fairly similar to usual when it comes to Mono Pyro. Mono Pyro by default is, is it's a team that can slot in groupers and or shielders and or more single target or more AOE damage very easily. And because of that, it just tends to be something that is very easy to play, easy to get good results out of. Obviously, I would not recommend playing it on the second side on this abyss, but on the first side, it's pretty good. Uh, next up, Aggravate. And unfortunately, I don't like Aggravate that much, this abyss. I think it's fine on Chamber 2. It's all right. On, it's good on Chamber 2. I, 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 shouldn't, I shouldn't dismiss it altogether. You, you really don't want to play it on Chamber one because the seahorse has 140 electro resistance when the pearl is intact but even when you break it it's still at 60. You, you can still brute force it if you have enough damage but it'll be a lot harder and yeah depending on which specific units you use on this it can be pretty difficult to also get the pyrobis shields down in time so all in all a fairly slightly more difficult than usual abyss for aggravate next up we have spread so it's again quicken teams but that are more focused on characters like alhytham doing damage rather than fischl and or other electro carries i actually like spread a bit more of this abyss because obviously in spread teams your damage is mostly coming from your dendro units not your electro units and this guy doesn't have insanely high dendro resistance he still has high dendro resistance it's all at fucking 90 percent if you don't break the pearl but dendro is pretty good at breaking the pearl right it's 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 decent you will generally tend to be playing two dendro units which makes it even easier to break the to break the pearl and get the resistances down uh, but even if you don't because of how easy it is to get 100 uptime on deep wood right instead of it being 90 90%, it's default 60%, which is a lot less of a problem, right? You're basically doing twice as much damage with Deepwood as you would be without Deepwood. A little bit less, but close to that. 
which when you actually take a look at it can actually be enough to brute force because again enemies in abyss just aren't ever really tanky enough that it's impossible to brute force it on field vape so we're looking at characters like yoimiya characters like hu tao characters like i guess the luke characters like yun fei hu tao is very good this abyss being able to benefit from this very easily is really really nice yoimiya doesn't consume her own hp and tends to be played with shielders which means that it's a bit harder to take advantage of this blessing. Even if you don't take advantage of it, it's still fine, but you don't really want to play Yoimi on this side. You can kind of brute force your way through chamber one with like Bennett Kazuha plus Hydro Unit and then have Bennett Kazuha Hydro Unit Yoimi for like the bosses here. But even then, like I, Yoimi on second side is not really ideal. And then on first side, uh, you can hit the Seahorse pretty easily. It's nice. This, however, is uh, a bit more AoE. But like I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Hyper Bloom, it's not three, four, five enemies, it's two. And then on top of that, outside of the hashlings, they're pretty hard to group reliably. So even teams that do have AoE won't be able to consolidate it all that well. So it's not that bad for you, Emiya, because the construction specialist mech very often goes past you. So it can be pretty hard to group it with the suppression. It also does the attack where it starts spinning around and you have to run away from it or just cry. Uh, Mirror Maiden, a solo wave. And because wind operatives take a fairly long time to group, then if you don't group them and you just start attacking them as soon as they spawn single target one at a time it's not actually that much worse all this to say uh this is a fairly decent abyss for you Amia. again right she can't benefit from blessing quite as much as hu tao which obviously when it comes to like a comparison between the two is a pretty big downside in a vacuum and like compared to usual performance this is still fairly good freeze this moment will be frozen in time the freeze can be nice to get your three stars on this if you're struggling to get it if you've got three stars on the other two chambers but you're struggling to get it on this one freeze can help you get it but you don't want to play freeze on this boss or this boss so it's really fine here but that's really you don't want to you don't you don't you don't want to actually play it on second slide for chambers two and three on the first side it's decent right it's pretty good against these pretty all right against these so as long as you can get past the single target damage on the seahorse you should be all right and because uh, a lot of cryo units tend to have fairly high application you can actually break the shield very very quickly so all in all this is actually a pretty decent freeze abyss it's still obviously not an abyss where like you'll be able to consistently get good value out of freeze in each chamber right they've been really going out of their way to not let you do that they put a non-freezable enemy me on at least one of the chambers on both halves in the, every single abyss but all things considered uh this isn't that bad for freeze but yeah i guess that's one thing to add for for freeze coplia has significantly higher power resistance which makes it even more of a pain in the ass to try to carry freeze through this mono hydro mono hydro is actually pretty interesting because there's a little bit of an incentive to play mono hydro over other teams i feel like i've said that in the past few abysses but that just tends to be what happens when you put pyro shields pyro abyss mage you'll break the shields a lot faster if you've got more than one source of hydro that just is what it is on top of that most of the like downsides of mono hydro which is that you'll generally tend to get better results replacing one of the because usually it's played with three hydro unit one animal unit and one of its like quote unquote downsides is that usually usually you'll get slightly better results replacing one of the hydro units with an electro unit because it gives you significantly better aoe damage but with the amount of hydro up that you have it's pretty easy to get through this because you can basically save a lot of time on the abyss major so having slightly weaker aoe against this isn't that big of a deal and having a better aoe in in the other chambers doesn't matter because they're single target uh, you can also play it on the on the first side it's easier to maintain good vv uptime and therefore not have to worry about the pearl too much when you only have one element on the team uh, so it's still all right for this i'm gonna struggle a little bit more against the maiden because she has very high hydro resistances but it's still brute forcible i'd probably more recommend it on second side than first side though but yeah next up hyper carries as usual we gotta talk about them separately so let's start with raiden uh, raiden is all right as a hyper you don't really want to play it on first side again because of the seahorse again right if you have like really high investment it's probably brute forcible but it's still not really what you want to be doing second side though actually pretty good raiden doesn't really get punished too much for having to jump because she can just plunge attack and she's not like reliant on triggering normal attack triggers like Sphinx so burst or stuff 
stuff like that. Nor is she reliant on long animations or uncancelled combos like Nevida when it comes to long animations or Yuimiya when it comes to like not wanting to cancel combos. She also has infinite poise during her during her burst, which makes it a lot easier to not well you, you won't get staggered. And she has very good like tracking with her attacks in the sense that she steps into her attacks if the enemies are further away in ways that make it so that you getting pushed away by this isn't that big of a deal. All in all, Raiden's just pretty good in this abyss on the second side though. Next up we have Wanderer. I think Wanderer also does fairly well in this abyss, but just like Raiden, there's a side he doesn't want and it's this side because obviously Coplia has 70% animal resistance and if you don't cancel her spinny attacks, she gains another 25%, up to 95%. And your damage just even with the res red from Farazon, it's pretty harsh. Uh, obviously, as usual, right, if you have enough vertical investment, you can still brute force it. But if you want to play him, I would definitely recommend the first chamber, not the second. Just like I mentioned with with Hyper Bloom, just like when I mentioned uh, what I mentioned with Yoemia. While this is AoE, there's a pretty decent portion of it where a lot of teams that have good AoE still tend to struggle consolidating it because the enemies don't group themselves very well. So if you are only single target, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, the, the wind operatives are obviously a bit of a pain, right? They have 50% animal resistance. Uh, now, obviously, you generally tend to run Wander with Farazon, so you're not doing half the damage, right? Uh, with Farazon, instead of starting at 10%, they start at uh, 50%. So instead of your damage being 1.1 times of base outgoing, it's going to be 0 0.8 times, which is still a fairly sizable nerf to his damage, but it's not as bad as if you didn't have any form of res shred. If you didn't have any form of res shred, obviously it would go from 0 0.9 to 0 0.5. In any case, the, the win operatives are going to make it a little bit harder, but it, it's still not that big of a deal. There's going to be teams that are better suited for it, but if you already have a built Wanderer and you want to be able to use them this abyss, it's not going to be a huge pain in the ass. Like, it's still fairly doable. And it's a very similar thing for Shout. Although, I will say, if you get the Seahorse uh, the seahorse's shield below a certain threshold. I'm not entirely sure what the threshold is, but uh, it will start doing a special attack where it goes in the air and spawns three things. And if he does that while you would want to battery, then you're going to end up with like delayed bursts and shit like that, which is going to... And it's it's going to be a little a little painful just because you can get interrupted in the middle of your rotation, basically. That being said, it's not that huge of a deal and you still get fairly... All right, matchups for this. Uh, Xiao does not really struggle to consolidate his AoE against the mech and the, or against the two mechs, right? Because his AoE is fairly large and it's a, very easy to actually dictate where it goes. He can also jump over the spinny thing, which makes it a lot easier to tank it because you don't need shields. You don't need your shields to be as strong because you can dodge a part of it by being over it. But yeah, all in all, uh, also a fairly decent abyss for Xiao, where the wind operatives will obviously be a little bit of a potential issue, but not necessarily that huge of a problem. This is also a fairly decent abyss for Ella. When you look at the mechs, the construction mechs, they don't actually have increased physical resistance like Ruin Guards do. Suppression mech doesn't have it either. And then Mirror Maiden, minus 20. Wind operatives, minus 20. But then on top of that, Assuming that every character deals with a high resistance scenario, like when is the case for the seahorse, high resistances will not reduce your damage as much if you have a lot of res shred. Because, or once you reduce enemy resistances below 0%, the value of resistance shred becomes significantly lower. So characters that have a lot of resistance shred against enemies that don't have that much resistance will gain a decent amount from it, but against enemies that have a lot of physical resistance will gain a lot more. That doesn't mean that it's better when the enemies have higher resistances, because it's still less than if they had lower resistances. But if the enemy has high resistance to everything, then having a lot of shred can give you a bit of an advantage over teams that don't have a lot of shred. And because Ella teams basically always run Superconduct, and because Ella has shred inside of her kit, and then you've got Ella teams that use Shenha or Zhongli, which have even more shred, you, you basically negate a lot of the higher resistances from the seahorse. You effectively just have a lot of nice ways of dealing with it without having to break the shield. And then on top of that, you also can have ways to break the shield because she's a cryo unit and she's often played with at least one other cryo unit. All in all, this is actually a fairly reasonable abyss for her. None of the enemies are all that 
mobile in terms of like dodging your burst when you're about to hit it. Obviously the Mirror Maiden can do it, but it's predictable when she does it. So like it's very, very telegraphed. So if you know that she's going to do it exactly as your burst falls, you can just swap out of her a little bit early. Uh, the horse itself can dodge it, but it also has fairly telegraphed attacks. So it's again, not that huge of a deal. I would say that this Abyss is slightly better than average for her. Let's talk about Ganyu as well. Uh, you can play Ganyu Freeze, and it's all right. You can play Ganyu Melt, and I mean, it's it's Ganyu Melt. I think on the second side, it's an unplayable, uh, so it's really just first side. You can't really take advantage of the Blessing because if Ganyu gets hit and takes damage, it usually means she gets staggered, so you don't want that to happen. I guess you can try to use with a character like Deya, where you still get hit, but... Ugh. Not, 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 not that big of a fan, but it does kind of work compared to like her usual performance is pretty decent. Uh, this is a fairly decent abyss for her. You are going to absolutely need resistance to interruption because the electro fields can apply electro to you. And if you're standing inside of the electro field with a Bennett burst, you will overload yourself and it will not be fun. You will be having a very, very bad time if you don't have any form of resistance to interruption, even more so than usual, I think a bit reliant on resistance or interruption. But even then, right, it's it's very often something you want anyways. But uh, yeah, all in all, on you, all right on this abyss. Air Fryer. Air Fryer is not real. Like, it, Air Fryer is a funny meme. It's never really been that good. Unironically though, in this abyss, it's not that terrible. The main thing about Air Fryer is that it's pretty brain dead, right? So for those of you who aren't aware, Air Fryer is basically burning with animal units to try to get your animal units to be the one to trigger the burning because you want to build them fully M anyways. And it's basically just the animal units doing all the damage with the Nahida. It's not great. It'll never be great. It's pretty hard cat in terms of the amount of damage it can do, but it's really good at spreading your damage over every enemy in a chamber because of the way that burning self-sustains itself as long as you keep applying dendro and the way that Nahida, as long as you keep hitting one of the enemies, will apply dendro to all of the enemies that you have marked. In other words, it's very brain dead to play, but it's just not very strong. That being said, the burning reaction can apply pyro to the pearl and make it so that you break the shield even faster, which means that it's one of the fastest teams at breaking the seahorse shield. Its weakness tends to be single target and it can kind of make up for that weakness because of the specific good matchup against the seahorse. And then, I mean, if you're playing with Venti, it's very easy to group the wind operatives. So it's not the worst abyss for Air Fryer, but at the end of the day, Air Fryer is still more of a meme team than a real one. So just keep that in mind. Taser! I think Taser's all right, this abyss. The thing about Taser is it's never gonna be insane and it's never gonna be bad. Taser kind of just works everywhere unless the enemies are immune to both Hydro and Electro. You've got very high resistance to, or very high damage reduction so that Coplia and the field generator aren't that scary. You've got AoE damage and grouping, also have decent single target. Obviously, some of your damage is Electro, so it's not gonna be as good as usual against the Seahorse. And some of your damage is Hydro, which means that it's not gonna be as good as usual against the Mirror Maiden, but it kind of just doesn't care. <laughs> Taser doesn't care. Taser will clear anyways. Uh, you can play it on either side. It's fine. I think this is a slightly worse abyss than usual for Taser, but it's still fairly decent. Overvape. So Overvape refers to uh, vaporized teams where you use an Electro unit, generally instead of an Animal unit, to have your Power unit trigger both Vaporize and Overload. So the most popular example of that is Rational. I think Overvape is pretty good, this abyss. Rift Hounds are a bit of a pain in the ass because they can get overloaded away from each other in ways that are pretty annoying, but your Electro plus Hydro app makes the Pyro Abyss Mages not really... It makes them fairly trivial. And then if you're running Sinto, damage reduction makes this pretty, pretty easy. You tend to have pretty good single target damage in those Overvape teams. Same for this. So yeah, all in all, overweight, pretty good, this abyss. Salad! This abyss doesn't really rely on grouping with your animal units all that much. So I don't think this is the best one for Salad. Salad is always at least fairly decent. And yeah, for those of you who aren't aware, Salad is effectively a hyper bloom team where instead of having an electro unit be the trigger for your reactions, you use an electro unit that doesn't really target seeds too much. So either Beto, whose burst doesn't target seeds at all, or uh, Fischl, whose Oz can trigger hyper bloom, but in very, very small AoE. So it generally tends not to trigger it too much, along with an animal unit who will trigger swirl and the electro swirls will hit the seeds. And those are going to be the ones that trigger hyper bloom. Effectively, you get to build an electro unit 
on the traditional build and still get talent damage without having to sacrifice hyper bloom damage because your animal unit is the one triggering hyper bloom not the electro one it's it's not a particularly good abyss for salad because you don't really need grouping grouping is still nice for this chamber specifically it doesn't do that much in this one and it's nice but not necessary like i mentioned earlier in this one so all in all yeah and and then the fact that obviously this hurts hyperloom a little bit by and virgin teams by triggering the seeds that you generate for you can also be even more of a pain in the ass all in all worse abyss than usual for solid but still okay next up hyper fridge you get a cryo unit for the seahorse to help break the shield more easily and then freezes on these help your hyper loon teams i i don't know if i'd say that hyper fridge is necessarily better than normal hyper loon this abyss but it definitely has a few more things going for it so uh, especially if either your yelan or your sinkso needs to be used in the other team and yeah so again a hyper fridge is uh, a hyper loon core with a crow unit to so that you get pretty reliable freeze uptime on top of your base hyper loon team and the cryo will not really interfere with your seed generation uh, if anything it can actually help your seed generation more than hurt it but it's mainly just about having freeze while being on a hyperloom team next up oven and again right we're getting into the the, the the spicier names for teams it refers to a very similar thing as hyper fridge but where you use burgeon instead so it's a burgeon core with a cryo unit and to, to, where you try to get some freeze up time you'll get a little bit less freeze up time because you'll be triggering burgeon but you'll also be triggering burning right when you attack an enemy with an underlying dendro aura with pyro it's going to trigger burning and it's going to un unfreeze them immediately but you still get a decent amount of uptime on it uh, all in all i don't think that's the greatest abyss for it right virgin when it comes to single target will generally tend to fall behind the hyper bloom teams so not sure i'd really recommend it to get past this uh, you will get potentially better results on chambers two and three uh, but then you also have to group these which all in all it's it's slightly worse than usual in this abyss right this the side that cares about the aoe more also punishes you for creating dendro seeds and can yoink them from you uh so they it's another it's another virgin archetype where you use animal units to trigger the reactions it's not like t like toma isn't doing anything in the team it's like kazuha who's triggering uh the reactions again fairly similar issues but then on top of that as i mentioned earlier grouping is not necessarily as good in this abyss as it usually is curry curry is the um another virgin archetype or you use electro as the last slot uh similar to salad where you use an electro unit that will not trigger seeds for you like beta or official in order to use the electro aura and the quicken electro charge interactions which i'm not going to cover today but i've talked about them before you can probably look at toma video close to sumeru release if you want more information on that but yeah you're you're using a few cool neat gauge interactions to effectively generate more seeds while also uh getting your power unit to trigger some overloads on top of their base their base versions in the team and because they're already being built em then that's just an upside curry tends to be the better of the archetypes when it comes to virgin like sub archetypes and i think that's pretty much still the case in this one i would recommend it more on the second side than on the first side but it'll it'll do all right mono geo mono geo is one of the teams where just like when you look at like a high thumb teams for example it's very easy to maintain 100 uptime on your resistance shred from the resonance and it's also not that difficult to maintain good uptime on if you're using Li in your mono geo team his resistance shred it's fairly all right against the seahorse uh it's all right against these it's all right against these not really that great against the field generator because it has right it has 70 percent geo resistance and no resistance to other elements which obviously isn't ideal for geo teams but on the first side it still does fairly all right and then finally you have soup which is where basically you get a lot of reaction that's just basically pyro hydro electro animal and you just trigger a bunch of reactions soup is all right this abyss i wouldn't call it particularly strong compared to usual again right it's pretty similar not really better or worse and then finally, we have to talk about Nevilet. I struggled a lot to really categorize Nevilet because I feel like what he does is fairly new and what he does is fairly new in a bunch of different teams. I think you could talk about him in Taser teams where again, right, Miramata not quite ideal for him, but you can still kind of brute force it because it's not that tanky and the blessing is just so strong on him that it, it, it won't be that big of a deal. One really nice thing about Nevilet is that when enemies aren't like 
spawning at multiple corners when they're all spawning relatively close to each other or in a line it's actually very easy to consolidate his aoe the more i play with it the more like it really stands out to me as being incredibly easy to consolidate aoe with him i think that he has some potential issues against the seahorse i think that a lot of his teams can struggle a little bit when it comes to high resistance enemies because his vv setups are ping dependent and punish you a lot for having high ping either by making it so that your hydro aura expires incredibly easily or by making it so that well you have to like do your your, your hydro swirl by itself without like an electro swirl or something like that and that means you lose some uptime on your swirl because it takes you longer on other characters before you swap back to him it's not that big of a deal but it is something that is worth mentioning that being said he is incredibly strong against the second side of this abyss right they very much balance the abyss around trying to sell him not only do you have obviously the really good blessing but you also have fairly squishy enemies accompanied by one big enemies which makes it so that as long as you're constantly aiming at the big enemy and like slightly also trying to hit the small ones the small ones will die at the same time as the big one if not faster even if you're not actively going for them and then obviously pyro shields uh he doesn't have the fastest hydro application but he does have very good constant sustained hydro application and it's pretty easy to line it up so that it hits all three of the pyro mages because like i said right even if they do teleport in the line all you have to do is right they teleport in a line like here 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 right like if, if you're here you're looking this way right this is your your vision so this is where they teleport well all you got to do is you walk here and then you bite and blast that way and you'll hit all three of them in chamber two he has enough range that he doesn't have to stay too close to Coplia, right so you're not gonna get hit by her melee attacks and you don't need to be close so he's he's not bothered by the fact that the melee attack pushed back anyways he's also very tanky and has a lot of self-healing self-sustain which means that even if you do get hit by the things you can kind of just heal it back up and shrug it off and then finally fairly similar thing for the field generator now obviously it's a little bit more annoying because you have to like you, you you'll still get interrupted in the middle of your charge attacks if you're not jumping but you're probably not gonna die uh, all in all this is a very good abyss for him in basically all of his teams i wouldn't really consider him a hyper carry i think there are teams where he can be treated as such right where you can effectively focus the whole team on increasing his damage without getting any damage from the other characters mainly like if you do like kazuha jongli changling it's a very good team for increasing his personal damage and it performs particularly well this abyss because if you're focusing all of your dam all of your team on buffing his damage then the fact that you're getting higher damage on him from the blessing is going to matter more that being said though he's also fairly good in a lot of other archetypes he's pretty good in hyper bloom he's pretty good in some like weird mix of taser and hyper bloom where it's really a hyper bloom team but you still put an animal unit in there to, to get a hydro swirl because you want to get a third reaction to increase his personal damage and then on top of that if you're going to get a third reaction then you might as well have it be one that helps the team in some way so obviously you can use an animal unit i don't like using animal units on the last slot all that much because the setups can be a little uh, can be pretty scuffed it's nice to front load your damage but once your vv runs out especially if, if you're running nahida it's very difficult to get a second hydro swirl i've been really liking running him either with a cryo unit as the last slot or a pyro unit uh cryo unit is going to tend to be a lot nicer when it comes to uh, stuff like this because you get to freeze the enemies on top of the hyper bloom and it's just incredibly chill right so it's basically a hyper fridge team and because cryo and dendro can coexist it's very very easy to get that freeze and get that third reaction right whereas if you're trying to go for an animal or a geo as the last slot it can be pretty difficult to have a stable hydro aura on the enemy because you have to get through nahida's nether application and and that tends to be fairly difficult to do and it's not just you have to get past the nahida dendro application you have to get past the dendro the nahida dendro application and apply hydro and not remove it in any way so you have to make sure that nothing else is hitting them then you can swap to the animal unit and get your hydro swirl or the geo unit and get your crystallize but it's all in all it can be a little difficult to get that reliably which is why i've been liking cryo units a lot more but if you're killing enemies in one rotation obviously then that's not going to be a problem I've also been liking pyro units and it's actually one of the two teams that I'm going to be showing today right so at the end of the meta roundup I like doing one full run of abyss where I 
show the things I talked about on top of, you know, not having two neat little teams. This specific team is going to be a bit more reliant on having specific characters, and we'll get into that in a second, and I'll probably have something very different for the for the other side. I, I realize my, my sheet didn't have national. National is good. There is no such thing as a bad national abyss. You can play it on either side and it does very well. You've got the hydro to deal with the Pyro Mages, and you've got the single target damage to deal with the bosses. National has some pretty good double swirl VV setups, so that all of your damage can at least be fairly decent against the Seahorse. Plus, it has pretty good Pyro application to deal with the Pearl and get it down fairly early. Mirror Maiden does have Hydro Res, you but it's not that big of but but it's not that big of a deal because you have a decent amount of Pyro damage coming from the rest of the team. And uh, yeah, all in all, just national good. That basically does it for the meta roundup. So let's get into into a showcase. So this is the team I'm going to be running. I've, I've tweeted about this a little bit ago, a few days ago, and talked about what makes Deia an actually decent option in this team. It mainly boils down to the fact that you get your third reaction without it being reliant on having a Hydro application get through Nahida's Dendro and actually stay as an aura on the enemy, which is very difficult. Well, if the enemy's burning, you get your Vaporize. You don't need to have a Hydro aura. You can have a burning aura and then trigger Vaporize and you get your stack from that. And on top of that, if the enemy is burning, the reaction you get is a vape, and vape tends to, you know, increase damage on on the hit that triggered it by a pretty decent amount. It's not like an insanely amazing team, but it's an actual nice use of Dea, where with Nebulet, you really want resistance interruption at the beginning, because while you're casting E, Burst, doing your stuff on your other, other characters, you're not really moving, which means that enemies can walk towards you and get pretty close to you. So get, having interruption resistance at the start of your uptime is really nice, because you can start attacking and then kite backwards. And after that, like, it not lasting that long isn't that huge of a deal because you're you've kited backwards and you're not too close to the enemies anymore so a lot of Dea's weaknesses are alleviated by the dynamic of the team and the few good things that Dea provides are actually fairly useful for the team so all in all it's a pretty good use of Dea uh, unfortunately this team doesn't really work if you're using a different dendro unit so if you're using uh baiju or yao yao or dendro main character well the good the, the only real upside of having like pirate Pyro as your last slot here, like a low Pyro app. It's not really worth running a Pyro unit over an animal unit if you can reliably get your Hydro Swirl. And when you don't have Nahida's Dendro app, you can reliably get your Hydro Swirl. So you really lose the only real incentive to use Dea. It's still going to be fine, but it's just a worse version of the alternatives at that point. So yeah, it does, however, work with Kuki. So Raiden is not necessary. But like I mentioned, uh, I'm going to be playing on second side and Kuki against these. It, it can be pretty difficult to reliably trigger your Hyper Blooms because you get pushed away from them. I know that this is a five star only team. I'm sorry about that, but uh, it is what it is. No, that is not the rotation. Oh, that's fine. But yeah, so as you can see, there's this hydro thing on the ground right here. And if I, yeah. Well, I guess. Rain outlines your face. Eh, whatever. I didn't do them, but it is what it is. Wait, I keep doing the wrong order, man. It's fine. Took a lot of damage there, but we're all right. Try to heal back up. Uh, I do want to show properly the the electro fields. Don't be crazy. Okay. Yeah. See all, all this this all of this thing. If you trigger bloom inside of this, it just is thrown onto you, and it's not ideal. Anyways, I wanna. I wasted a lot of time trying to show that, so hopefully we still get it in time. It's gonna be tight. Oh, 
Let the mighty be humble. That's not the button I want to press. The tides beckon. But it's okay. So, if you want to bait the uh, mages, right, you're kind of going to have to just hope they go pretty close together here. And we got lucky here, so that's nice. Uh, I think we might be able to do it in time. It's going to be very tight, though. That was seven exactly. We didn't get it. We didn't get a glitch. Let's go. Okay. Now here we got a lot of a lot of stagger, so that might be a little cringe, but actually, let's just not use razor burst. Keep forgetting that's a and nah, I'm gonna use it. Too much damage to lose out on. How did that not? Oh my god. Well, that's fine. Sometimes things don't go your way. Let me leave you a verse. Rain outlines you. Rocking! Spring forth! Everybody stand back! But yeah, as you can see, right, the big guy really likes going past you. Try to get my burst back. I'll wait until the ores are gone so I don't trigger a reaction. Okay. But yeah, so here... I'll, I'll do the setup normally, but then we can take a look at... Uh, I'm not gonna start hitting them. I'm just gonna show you guys how, just how much damage you take if you're not... Wait. Fuck. I can't really show it because I have the... Uh, damn it. Well, that's all right. It is what it is. Yeah. So, right, if you're just attacking here, you can start taking a pretty... You know what? Yeah, there we go, right? Like, you can, you can start taking some pretty strong hits and lose a lot of health from that. I think my Nahida's on the wrong catalyst. Take yourself to home. Walk alive. The tide is we almost died. But that's okay. Nahida's supposed to be on five in this team. I'm pretty sure she's not on five. But that's all right. Finally, we've got the Mirror Maiden. I kind of want to let it hit me. But... Actually, yeah, I want to get hit by that. It makes her immune to knockback, so I can overload to my heart's content. Let me leave you a burst. I'll just. But yeah, so here, as you can see, right. It kind of just no looks at you, and then it walks forward, and then it can do another range attack if you if you get a little close to it. And you can just group them by waiting. Oops. I taste blood. Witness the power of Goodwa. But yeah. there's only so much grouping you can do here, and a good part of it is just gonna be well unpleasant. 
That's how I'm gonna how I'm gonna describe it. No, my sword. Anyway, I spent a lot of time actually describing things, so I lost lost a lot of time on it, but we should be more than fine once it gets to the end, or once we get to the second side. Um, we'll get carried by Nebula, and that's okay. Okay, and finally... But yeah, so here, um, I'm not gonna dodge the first one because my Dea resistance to interruption will still be active, but I will have to dodge the second one, otherwise I get staggered. So you have to jump to dodge it. We are vibing on time. Everything's all right. Anyway, spent a lot of time explaining what the, 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 the things were, so obviously time was not as good as it could have been, but hopefully it helps give you an idea of how this abyss can be done. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the meta roundup. I feel like it was a little bit longer than the previous ones. Had a few more things to say, but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, YouTube.